Hi, I'm Krishna and in this video I'll be talking about how we can identify starvation of system resources using VMstat. We are going to learn about how we can analyze VMstat and what are the important attributes we need to look for while analyzing VMstat and how VMstat plays a vital role and can be helpful in identifying inadequate system resources or starvation of system resources on your node causing performance problems and what are the tuning and recommendations um, in this video I'll be referring CPU power and the memory demand or memory allocated to the node as a system resources so let's consider a scenario where uh, you are running um, a session and uh, the session runs fine at certain intervals of time and when you are running the same session at a different point of time you see a lack of performance or a dip uh, in the performance um, the difference in these two um, runs is only the workload the remaining part of it um, or the parameters pass the amount of data processed being seen uh, it's the workload which is variant when you say workload workload on overall system so during such instances when you want to look at a holistic view or to understand the bigger picture or from the system on how uh, the entire system is responding uh, to the to the application system demand in terms of CPU power in terms of memory VM uh, stat plays a vital role um, nowadays we see most of the enterprise deployments are happening on more on uh, virtualized um, environments rather than individual physical nodes um, there are definitely advantages of uh, using virtualized environments over physical environment like ease of maintenance ease of administration and the reduction of cost uh, by focusing on one machine versus fo uh, focusing on multiple physical nodes in order to create a virtualized environment uh, typically it will be done on a huge physical machine having a um, large number of CPUs and a huge amount of RAM and that will be divided into multiple logical nodes and each nodes will be um, will have certain number of CPUs logical CPUs and uh, memory assigned to it um, hence, um, assigning of these physical resources to these virtualized environments need to be done carefully considering the factors like the amount of load and the amount of workload it need to um, process or few of the um, few of the examples or few of the factors that need to be considered. If the memory and the CPU demands of the application which is running on these um, virtualized nodes exceeds what is available in the system then we'll see performance implications because of lack of enough system resources and uh, in this video I'll demonstrate taking a VM stat on environment where um, on a working environment where we are not seeing any system resource constraint versus an environment where VM stat is taken and how do we look at some of the important attributes and identify whether the problem is because of starvation of system resources so this is um, on AX machine on which I'm running a command VM stat um, so I'm passing two parameters VM stat 2 comma 10 so VM stat 2 and 10 says that I need to collect VM stat of 10 summaries with an interval of two seconds a uh, VM stat report will show you the system configuration and uh, we'll also talk about a snapshot of how the system is behaving at that particular point of time uh, most of you might be aware of uh, what parameters uh, what each of these parameters does and what are the meaning of all these attributes in VM stat um, however I'll be touching about some of the important attributes that we need to watch for 
while we are looking at uh, performance issues which is causing from the starvation of system resources. We will see um, on AX the important attribute we need to consider here are first R. R is nothing but the average number of kernel threads that are ready and waiting for kernel attention where B refers to the number of average number of kernel threads placed in the waiting queue and uh, there are different sections in VM stat one is the number of kernel threads and its statistics and then uh, with respect to memory with respect to paging and faults and last one the amount of CPU utilization and in fact it's uh, the percentage of CPU utilization that uh, VM stat displays so with respect to memory we'll see the active um, how much amount of virtual memory is active at the given point and how much of memory is free uh, when it comes to paging we'll see the amount of paging and page out activity and uh, how much amount of uh, um, interrupts or system calls um, we are seeing at that point of time when the VM stat is taken IN stands for interrupts, SY stands for the system calls and CS stands for context switches. When it comes to the CPU um, section of it, we will see the CPU utilization which is a percentage across multiple factors like the CPU utilization at the user level, the, the system level and how much of CPU is idle and how much of CPU is waiting, waiting uh, for the amount of IO operation that is spending. So when you see a normal environment in which VM stat is taken, we'll see that the values of R and B are typically zero. You won't see any spikes of um, R, and um, you will typically see that the amount of uh, kernel threads which are waiting in the run queue are processed by the kernel or the system at the same pace. Hence, you see the value of R being zero. If there is a memory constraint um, in your virtualized environment or in your node, you will see the value of free coming down. And uh, in case of AX, you will um, uh, there is a difference when you are talking about um, a VM stat in case of AX and Linux. Uh, the subtle differences, for example, when you are talking about Linux, VM stat also shows the details about how much of uh, swap memory is used and shows the activity of swap in and swap out in case of um, Linux it also shows the amount of uh, BI and BO that is the amount of block um, block um, operations which is done um, the amount of data blocks of data received from a blocking device or amount of data sent uh, to a blocking device so these memory statistics uh, will help us to identify if there is a memory constraint. When it comes to uh, the CPU utilization and the fonts, we'll see that when the interrupts or the system calls or the context which is uh, vary, there will be CPU. Uh, there will be a spike in the CPU utilization, and it can spread across whether it is at the user level or whether it is at the system level. We'll see a sample example of VM stat which is collected from a problematic environment. And we'll see how these values um, help us to understand if there is a starvation of system resources here. This is a configuration in which we have um, eight logical CPUs and two GB of um, RAM. We also see uh, something called as entitlement capacity which is 2 I'll be talking about that in uh, when you are when we go through the attributes uh, which talks about the shared resources here um, we are seeing the same values as that of uh, the previous example we see two extra values here the PC and EC EC is the entitlement capacity that is the number of the amount of CPU power which this particular virtualized node is entitled to get and the number of physical processors which it is attached to in this case it is 2 
so we are seeing we can go and make use of two processors and the entitlement capacity accordingly so if the entitlement capacity is tuned as per the memory demands um, there are multiple ways of share um, setting this entitlement capacity one is dedicated one is in a shareable mode when it is dedicated you will be using those resources no matter whether you are using uh, so much of CPU cycles or not it will be residing or it will be attached or assigned to that node in case of uh, shared the when there is not enough load those CPU cycles can be shared to other uh, virtualized nodes in that machine for the processing I mean it can share the processing power or the memory uh, to other nodes which are in need so in this example we see that the R value is spiking continuously as the time goes this snapshot is taken with the parameters 5 and 10 which means we are taking 10 summaries with 5 second interval and as we can see we the the values of R increases over a period of time at the same time we see the amount of um, CPU power at the system level increasing so it is not at the user level where the application is spending more time the CPU power is spent more at the system side in order to manage the workload we also see a spike in interrupts and system calls and context switches and uh, page in and page out activity and the free is coming down so the system is trying to manage more with the amount of application demands for more system resources like the CPU power or the memory and it is trying to manage it where you are spending more CPU cycles and it is spent more at the system side this for this uh, video demonstration we are talking only using a simple one snapshot taken during that prob uh, problematic time however if you are seeing a problem for a long period of time taking multiple snapshots will help us to identify the amount of delay um, the, the system is taking and that is translating to a performance tip or um, it is also translating to the performance low performance in your application so to summarize we discussed about how to analyze vmstat understanding important attributes of uh, vmstat and how vmstat helps in identifying inadequate system resources so the tuning and recommendations for such problem is depending on your deployment um, so in, in order to overcome lack of system resources it is recommended to go for a horizontal scaling that is you share the workload on you attach more nodes and share the workload in which the workload can be shared at, um, across multiple nodes and thereby the memory demands of the application will be less on that given physical or virtualized environments thank you we'd love to um, hear from you you can provide us a feedback on support videos at informatica.com or you can follow us on a twitter account infasupport thank you